first day I went to Chicago, I arrived and uh, I uh, prepared my uh, things in the, uh, in the student uh, residency. And uh, I opened uh, the window and uh, I saw um, African Americans uh, looking just uh, below the window, looking for something to eat and the girls. Because I can expect uh, this scene to happen uh, in, uh, in the third world, but not in the richest uh, uh, country on earth. And uh, I said to myself that uh, you are beginning now uh, a very rich experience in America, then you must uh, keep uh, yourself open and try to understand. Uh, probably one day you could write a novel uh, about this experience, and that's what happened. This in the novel, you have the two sides. You have the American side and you have the Arab Egyptian side. And, uh, they come to ask you, this happened to me twice. Uh, uh, are you Egyptian? I said yes. And they ask you very seriously, are you living in a pyramid? I asked this. I was alone. Uh, there was no beautiful lady. And uh, uh, I, uh, then I answered yes, I live in a pyramid. And, uh, uh, I have a pyramid uh, for my mother. And, uh, we have three, uh, I have three uh, small sisters uh, and three uh, small pyramids. And uh, every morning we must open our pyramids to say good morning, but we must close the window of the pyramid very quickly. Uh, and then he said, why should you uh, close it very quickly? I said, because it's very dangerous. How come that you don't know uh, the effect of an open window in a pyramid? Uh, I want uh, to buy a, a, a blue jeans for a girlfriend and then uh, the lady who was selling told me, told me where are you from and said uh, Egypt and she said oh Egypt do you uh, do women wear jeans in Egypt <laughs> and I said well I didn't want to tell you from the beginning you see this is going to be the first uh, female jeans in the area the Arab world and we are making history. So if you would like to have a photo, I and you and the, blue, the first blue jeans for females, that would be a good idea. And she was really about to have a photo. Uh, but at one, at one moment you feel bad because uh, they are really innocent and they didn't have any bad intention. I discovered uh, in America many things. The first of them is that uh, uh, there is another America, as a matter of fact. Uh, the America we see, uh, at least in the Arab world, in the TV, uh, we see America as a part of paradise uh, on the TV series, uh, where everybody is beautiful and everybody is rich, and the people usually have swimming pools in their houses. Uh, but I discovered in other America very, very quickly and very soon. The American people are very nice people and uh, very, very effective uh, uh, working people in the sense that I believe that they are probably the best technicians in the world, uh, everybody in his field. Uh, at the same time, they almost don't have any uh, knowledge about what's happening in other parts of the world. So, very poor knowledge about the world comes from two facts. The first of uh, this is that, uh, that America is a continent, as a matter of fact, so you can live uh, your life and work uh, like most Americans do. And, uh, uh, have all and change uh, your professions and uh, do everything in life without uh, being a need to any other part of the world. And the second fact why this knowledge is very poor is that uh, the foreign policy, the American foreign policy is decided by what we call in political science the big guys. And the big guys are the, the elites of the American system who are controlling the very big business. And, uh, the budget of some of about 200 corporations in America exceed uh, the budget of many countries. Uh, we are talking about economical structures unprecedented in history. And this give, uh, this give the power for these people to control what's happening in America and abroad. So it, I think this is my explanation and uh, even it is uh, a very strong opinion in America that uh, it was done by purpose that 
to keep the American people away from the knowledge of what's happening outside because this will facilitate the decisions for the big guys uh, about the foreign policy. Uh, when you uh, leave your country to your society, your culture to another culture, you have three choices. Uh, because it is, uh, you, it is a challenge, it is a barrier, it is a very critical moment when you decide to be a living in another society. Uh, the first choice is to get integrated in the new culture with keeping your roots and keeping your heritage and keeping your uh, pride of what you have been and what you are. And this is the good formula of immigration. I must tell you now, I must, uh, well, everybody knows this, that Egypt used to be uh, a country uh, which received immigrants. And we did receive many Italian immigrants for about more than one century. And the Italians in Egypt, especially in Alexandria and some parts of downtown Cairo, had all the time uh, make the, the, the good formula of immigration. They, they spoke Arabic and they got integrated in the daily uh, life, but they kept uh, their roots and their pride as Italians. Second choice is to enclose yourself and to refuse to get integrated. And this is very, very bad choice. And you can see, I have seen this uh, many times, uh, people who even become fanatics uh, religiously uh, to get to refuse to get integrated, they because they are scared. They are scared from the new culture, and they feel that they are they are going to be secure if they cross their mind and they cross their mentality. And this is very bad. And I believe that anybody who would make this choice is better for him to go to go home. The choice is the most terrible one, and this is uh, the choice of Rafael Sebet. On that, they cancel their identity. Uh, they feel that the solution will be that they are no more, if they are Arabs, they are no more Arabs, but they have become uh, Occidental people or uh, Western people, and this uh, it's it's a it's a psychological disorder. As a matter of, he becomes uh, very aggressive, in attacking his own culture, uh, because he tries to prove to himself and to other people that he is no more uh, belonging to these people. That choice is very sad because some of people are very dangerous because they make confusion on both sides. Pain to say that to say unbelievably racist statements about Arabs, and they are Arabs. So I, that's why I'm saying that this is a psychological disorder.